Okay, so thank you everybody for coming along. This is the first session of the Open Programming Miniconf at linux.conf.au 2011. Um, this is the second time we've run this particular Miniconf. We ran it in Wellington last year as a way of uh, encouraging more developers to attend and present their code at LCA. Um, one order of business that I want to draw to your attention is that we'll be running lightning talks in the last hour of today's, um, today's Miniconf. Registration for lightning talks will be uh, done via the wiki. So if you go to the Monday schedule on the LCA website uh, and follow the link through to the Open Programming Miniconf Lightning Talks, you can just put your name and your topic there. Uh, we'd love to get as many of you talking as possible. Uh, so let's get up to our first presentation. Uh, I'm reliably informed that our first presenter is a Perl hacker. He also provided me with an extensive biography, which he assures me is entirely true. Uh, please welcome Michael Schwern, who is presenting on Perl 5i. Hello. So, yeah, thanks for starting this off. And I guess uh, let's start the language mini comp with a kind of mini, mini language. Now, first, uh, a poll. Um, how many people will raise their hand? Not bad. All right, two. Making up. Excellent. Going the extra mile. Um, how many people here are or were pro programmers? All right, a good amount, I guess. Got the fan club. Um, I was a little uh, unexpected because I wrote, I wrote this talk for pro programmers. As I was rewriting the slides, I was like, oh yeah, I don't have to explain exceptions to the audience. Um, so, Pro 5i. Uh, so, Pro 5 is perpetually stuck in 1995. Um, and it has to be because it's backwards compatible and everything new has to be supported forever and they're very, very conservative and they cannot experiment. And one of the grand uh, things is that Pro 5 has no way to trim the white space off the front and back of the string. Everybody does it. It gets proposed every year. It's the simplest thing in the universe, and it never gets in. Because uh, they can never agree on the exact details, and they have to agree on the exact details. Um, now, but Larry gave Pro programmers a lot of power, and this power is expressed, and the, the language is advanced through CPAN modules. The problem is which ones you use, and what's, what you're supposed to use and what you're not supposed to use is changes over time. Uh, and uh, this becomes tribal knowledge that is not known to a new programmer. And out of the box, it's still 1995. On CPAN, it may be the 21st century. The docs don't keep up, the books don't keep up. So I wrote this thing called Pro 5i, starting with the idea that I wanted to encode this tribal knowledge. I wanted to uh, have this, you know, Standard practice, all in one line. Um, it's the best of CPAN, sure, they're good quality and they play nice together. It also takes advantage of synergies that they can't take advantage of alone. Now, like every project of mine, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a pun, not a particularly good one. Uh, I think Damien Conway came up with it. This is the imaginary version of Perl, or, or as the retro name is now improved. Or as somebody said, oh god, you made it more complex. Uh, so the way you think about it is that you know, Perl is heading this way up towards Perl 6, and we're kind of going uh, in our own direction. Um, taking ideas from Perl 6 and, and using new Perl 5 features as they come in and enabling them, because a lot of times they're turned off by default. So we're taking the onion, and we're improving it. Um, so here's, here's the, the thing, is that I am, uh, Perl 5, it's a bit embarrassing, right? Uh, so for example, here is how you write a timestamp to a file in Perl 5. You have to uh, open the file and then check to make sure it opened, and then you print to the file, but oh wait, there's no ISO 8601 date function built into Perl, so you've got to write one. And our date processing is horrifying. Um, it's just embarrassing. And so you have to write all this stuff just to write an ISO timestamp to a file with Perl out of the box. Or you can write this. Um, so it's, it's really small, and it's supposed to be small. because it's... So what, what is that? What's going on here? There's a lot going on here. The first thing is it's loading Perl 5i. And I'll talk about why it's 2 uh, in a little bit. We've got function signatures. Well, OK, what don't you see? You don't see use strict and use warnings. Those are now on by default, like every sensible programmer should. Um, uh, we've got lexical file handles. We've got uh, no uh, error message there, because that's done for you, like every sensible programmer should. 
Um, we've got function signatures. Hey, welcome to 1982. Um, uh, we've got say, which is the print that puts the new line on the end. And we've got an actual date object coming in here. So that's kind of like the synergy that I was talking about, what's going on, makes things so much more uh, easier to write. So I want to go through the major concepts uh, as quickly as possible, because um, this is really an hour talk. So uh, let's start with exceptions. So as I said, in, in Perl 5, makes you write out your own error handling, even with those main mundane things like writing a program, uh, right, opening a file. Now, as every Klingon programmer knows, I can't pronounce that. Anybody? Damn. Well, and Paul is not here. Damn. Uh, the, the, the rough translation is, it is better to die than to return in failure. Uh, and uh, I don't have to explain why that's a good idea to this audience, I hope. So um, Pro 5i turns all of the, uh, these things, it, well, and I actually have more to explain. It makes that all implicit. It makes all the, the file functions uh, um, just throw an error when they fail. And the error message is probably better than what you would write in the first place. It actually you know, tells you all the information you want to know, what the file was, what you were doing with it, and so on and so forth. All just by default. It does the right thing by default, and it's more convenient. Um, doing the right thing does not have to be hard. Uh, it doesn't just work on, on open. It works on all of the, uh, the file stuff, which is very important sometimes. Um, that's, a, that's all based on a module called AutoDie, which is Paul Fenwick's thing. And uh, Perl 5i just sort of brings in these exist pre-existing modules. Um, so we don't just use exceptions. We kind of embrace them. Perl 5i um, tries to make as many of its functions, as many of Perl functions as possible, throw exceptions when that is the right thing to do as opposed to returning a false value and having you check it. Um, which, as I said, Perl programmers don't really understand this still. Um, and we add an exception handler, a real exception handler. Uh, normally, eval is used, but eval has all sorts of issues. And if you don't know them, I won't bore you with them. Let's just say that that fixes them. It gives you try, catch, and finally. And then uh, the other cool thing which that's up here is that uh, it's using the new uh, uh, Pro 5 switch statement, the given when stuff, um, which you get for free because we actually turn it on. It's all available in Pro 5.10, but nobody thinks to turn it on. Uh, so it's both convenient and correct. So there's no reason to do it the sloppy way, because the sloppy way is actually now harder. It's, fix it's fixing the default. Questions before we move on to the next section? On the switch statement? Yes. Can I elaborate on it? Yes. No. It was, it was built module, um, but it was, was quite a hack. Yeah, now it's yeah. built in. It's built As of 510, it's built in. You, you turn it on with use feature, and there you go. Um, sorry, I said no because just tangent. Not much time. Um, right, so objects. Perl is, technically speaking, an object-oriented language. Um, but it's still a procedural language, really. So Perl 5i embraces objects. Again, finally. Welcome to... When was small talk invented? 1960 something? Yeah. Woohoo! Uh, so here is how you get the year in Perl 5, right? It's, yeah, embarrassing. Um, this is a legacy. This is the legacy of how C does it. And it's actually worse than how C does it because C actually has a structure for this instead of just returning it to you as this big blot of nine arguments. Um, C was designed in 1970. We can do this better. And so now, the built-in just return a date object. You ask it, what's the year? And then print yourself. Um, the time function returns the same thing. And they're all uh, overloaded to maintain compatibility. So they still do what they, what they used to do. Um, st statting a file, same thing. Just return a blue of, of a dozen things. You, could, you know, who knows which one of them is the modified time. Uh, caller, same thing. Um, uh, here is how, in Pro 5, you, was there a question? Okay. Uh, in Pro 5, you um, make a file handle flush itself on every write. Yeah. Uh, uh. Um, here's how you do it in Pro 5i. File handle's an object. You call a method on it. It's called auto flush. Um, last night, I realized that this functionality has been in Pro 5 for 13 years. 
and nobody uses it because it's not turned on. You do? Hey, Sam. Yeah, right. You, you just turn out, you load one module and it's done in the language even automatically uses it for you. Um, but now that it's there by default, you can actually start using it. Uh, right, objects, great. Any questions on that? Not really revolutionary. We've known about them for a while. So every Perl programmer for a while was uh, uh, drilling over Ruby. And one of the things Ruby does is object everywhere. Well, now Perl does too. And actually, Perl has had this again for years. Nobody was using it. Um, in Perl 5i, everything is an object. Strings are objects, arrays are objects, hashes are objects. And as any Ruby or, uh, I guess, Python programmer knows, and as Java programmers don't, um, this is a huge thing to have everything be an object. Everything in the language, be able to call methods on it, um, and so on and so forth. Because from a language design perspective, methods are really cheap to add. Keywords are not. So if, as a procedural language, whenever Perl 5 decides, I'm going to add a new keyword to the language. I'm going to add a thing called trim. This suddenly means that uh, Perl 5 gets a pony called trim, but you don't. You can no longer use the trim keyword as a function name or a method name or anything else in the language. Perl 5 takes that away from you. So if Perl 5 wants to have, say, a universal object identifier and call it ID, all of a sudden you can't have a function called ID. Namespace pollution is a big problem in Perl 5, not in Perl 5i, because if I want to add a trim method, I add it to the scalar class. And then it just affects scalars, which nobody else is using anyway. Um, there, what's that? Say again? If you have a keyword called string, uh, uh -huh. trim, sorry, yeah. then you give it a number. You have to do something sensible with that number. Oh, yeah. Perl already does that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Perl already has the, the number, no, the number no, no, string my, my thing. My point was more along the lines of if you add a keyword called trim, suddenly yeah. you have to have it do something sensible with arrays. Oh, the passes, keyword. The keyword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, or you just make it puke. But yeah, yeah, you have to think about that. Um, no, no, th this is arguing, they would argue about things like, well, what about Unicode white space? Well, what if I want to change the trim character? What if I want to trim from the left or from the right? What if I want to, it's like, oh, God, guys, just pick something and do it. Um, yeah, uh, huge debate. So, uh, right, so trim. Um, we also have L trim and R trim if you want to go from the left or the right. And it does take options to say what characters I do want to trim because, again, it's cheap, it's a method. Uh, we have all of these, we, the arguments to the, to the method are all available, so we can throw options on the end. Um, uh, <laughs> aliasing in Perl is extremely scary. It's extreme, you have to know turning off strict and symbol table hacking and all this kind of stuff. And even the concept is a little scary. But the idea that I want to make, I want to generate a code reference and then I want to name it this is actually very, very powerful. Um, it's very, very powerful if you want to uh, generate classes and everything else. And um, uh, traditionally, it's extremely scary. Well, now it's not. You can alias pretty much anything in Perl 5i. Uh, so you, take a, you make a code ref, you call alias on it, you give it a class and a name, and there you go. Boop, it exists. And this was like hidden power that only the masters could know how to use. And it was kind of passed down from person to person. It's never really documented how to do it in the Perl documentation. So now it's just take it, encapsulate it, and now everybody can use it. Um, this, and this leads into the fact. The Perl 5i fact. So having objects everywhere and having these cheap utility methods finally allows us to write better fact answers. So because Perl is so stingy with its keywords, it doesn't write things unless it thinks it's really important. Um, so for an innocent question like, how do I determine if a scalar is a number, and what type of number is it? Right? Is it an integer? Is it a float? Is it a decimal? Is it not a number at all? Well, here's what the Perl fact will tell you to do. Um, first, it starts out with a caveat. Like, let's assume that you don't care about these special things over here, and then cut and paste these regular expressions into your code. And, <laughs> yeah, um, it's a problem. And into categories that really only someone with a double major in CS and math would care about. Uh, how many of you have a double major in CS and math? All right, yeah. You care? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Pro 5i is, is just gives you methods for it. Um, 
What else do we have? Uh, everybody hates references in Perl uh, because the dereferencing syntax sucks. Um, but now they're all objects, so you can call, just call the methods right on them. All the built-ins are available. Um, we even have uh, a meta object so that you can do introspection and things on any object. Uh, instead of, these are, these are things that want, I want to be available to any object at all whatsoever. Rather than polluting the top level namespace with these, with these things, uh, I kind of created a side namespace by, uh, by having everything return a meta object. And it's a little hack for Perl. It also means that we don't pollute the top. We have our own little universal thing on the side. Um, this allows you to take any object and dump it out as Perl or as JSON if you really want to. Um, or take a checksum of it uh, in MD5, the base 64 formatted. It's all very handy stuff. Um, everything now is in the universal object identifier. Um, you can check to see if two complicated data structures are equal. Um, and you can, it'll even work on overloaded objects in a sensible fashion. Uh, this was hard, but now it's done. Um, that's all located in the, the meta documentation, the stuff that works in every single object. Questions? We're moving on. Wow, five minutes. Okay, introspection. Uh, always been possible in Perl. The other languages are, are uh, uh, Java would always bag on us because we, we can introspect. Well, we can too, but, but it's really scary. This is how you find what uh, the parents of a method is in Perl. And here it is in Perl 5i. Just, what are your parents? What's your ISO array? Uh, here's a linear walk of the complete tree. Um, here is asking what methods you have available. Um, and then we jump into function signatures. Hello, Vinicom. You don't you don't want the Perl talk? Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so functions. Uh, this actually compiles down. It's not not a source filter into into something like this. Um, you can do it for methods as well. Um, you can do it for, uh, for, for anonymous Joe's Pizza. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm in the middle of a talk, so I'll have to, I'll have to go. Bye. <laughs> um, it works with anonymous functions. Uh, it, it means you don't have to use dollar underscore anymore if you don't want to. A uh, uh, really cool thing is you can, you can introspect on these and ask how many parameters you have. So this works. And this works, and this works. Uh, all iterating, this iterates through the array three at a time, and it just knows it because the function wants three, three parameters. Um, we fixed Perl, 2038 bug is fixed. That Bletcher's error message that you get when you can't find a file is now something nicer. Um, Unicode is turned on, which means you can have Unicode function names and Unicode uh, um, <laughs> regular expressions. And uh, so you can kill, you can put smart quotes in your regular expression if you want to. Um, uh, let's see, so it has a backwards incompatibility plan. Uh, I guarantee you, every major release of Pro 5i will be incompatible with the previous one. Absolutely guaranteed, or triple your free software back. Um, and this is because they actually work together, the major versions work together at, in the same process. So if you write code, a library that uses version one, it can work together with one that uses version two without clashing. So this allows us to uh, upgrade and, uh, and change our minds, basically, without breaking old code. So we're backwards compatible because the old version will still be there and we're, we're future compatible. We don't have to uh, repeat or maintain our mistakes forever and ever. And this allows us to basically be really agile because we can uh, throw out features there that are 90% done and then see how they're used and then make small tweaks to it later when we, when we do a major rev. Um, it's fairly efficient. Uh, it's a little bit slow loading right now. We try to only make you pay for what you use, uh, but it's no worse than Moose. Um, uh, it's a little slow, like this is when it has to load in date time, which is a big fat pig. We're working on that. And it's no slower than using any of those modules uh, like you would normally. Uh, is it stable? Yes, it actually is stable um, because of the incompatibility plan. The API is safe. I have a lot of experience doing really stable software. Um, the dependency tree is enormous, but as you can see, this is the, the, the test results for it. It's very, very, very green all the way down, and we watch that. If any of those starts to go red, we're right on the author. Um, there are docs and facts. Uh, uh, there's discussions. We kind of live in the issue tracker. Um, 
Working on it is not scary, despite the idea, uh, especially adding new methods and things. It's just like any other method, any, writing any other function. That's if you were to write something to turn, turn a string in a title case. It's normal Perl. Um, I take care of all the scary stuff, or other people take care of all the scary stuff. Um, uh, so some things to see also. Uh, there's now finally a book that's about how Perl programmers actually write Perl in the 21st century called Modern Perl. It's free, uh, or you can buy it in Dead Tree by Chromatic. There's a module called Task Kensho that kind of uh, has this huge just list of, of good Perl modules to have, and they're kind of a parallel thing. I haven't talked about Moose. Uh, Moose is the new object system derived from Perl 6, and it does everything and more than you ever thought you wanted to know. It's a postmodern object system. It's fantastic. And then Jacinta is talking uh, later today, or, or later on Tuesday? Thursday. Thursday uh, about modern Perl uh, best practice techniques. Um, oh my god, I got through it. Uh, these are the contributors. And are there any questions in that one minute that I have left? Uh, we've actually got plenty of time for questions during oh, the do? changeover. So does anybody have any questions for Schwern? Yeah. Just a moment. The microphone. Uh, the test suite that you showed us uh, earlier on uh, Pill 5 i who wrote that? The test, test suite. Test oh, oh the, all the dependency stuff? Yeah. That's a... a, a project of the CPAN testers. It's been around for a long time, years and years, or even a decade. And um, they've been tracking, they've been doing automated testing for a long time. Uh, and that dependency tree was written by Dave Cross or Dave Cantrell, one of the, one of the London Daves. And uh, it's just, you go to search on cpan.org, you look in a module, there's a link called dependencies, you click on that, and it'll show you all that. And there, yeah, modules are just constantly, there's just, Volunteer smoke testers, they see something go to CPAN, they hit it with half a dozen different machines and different versions of Perl, and they send you the report right back. And you don't even have to lift a finger, you just upload to CPAN, it's fantastic. Okay, any other questions? No? Ooh, yeah. There's one down here. Hang on. Michael, would you like to tell us about your shoes? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, because there is somebody else at the conference that has the issue. There are two people at these con I know at least that there are three of us. <laughs> Amongst the people at the conference, um, yeah. So normally, sometimes when I give this talk, somebody winds up asking about my shoes. I put a slide in the front because it happens. These are called the Vibram Five Fingers. I do not work for Vibram, but goddamn, I wish I did because I could make them give me a sales commission. Um, it's like being barefoot. There's no soul to it whatsoever. Uh, and they take a really long time to dry, and yes, they are comfortable, and they cost about $80 an American. Um, how do you do the function signatures? Which Devel Declare. Uh, okay. So the, uh, the actual function signatures are done using a thing called Devel Declare, um, which coerces the Perl parser into doing what you want. Essentially, you say, I want to take a, when you see this thing, this keyword, a keyword called func, it tells the parser, just, just hold on a moment, just stop. Let me take over, let me take that string you were about to parse, yeah, rearrange it. So in this case, it takes func name, uh, func name signature and turns it into sub name, brace, and then uh, the Perl code. And then goes, all right, look at it again. Sorry, you, you get the point of where it is in the, in the source code. Yeah, yeah, it, it, but, it, but as, but as the, par, but the parser is doing it. So I'm not, I'm not like writing my own parser. Yeah. The parser actually gets the point and says, hey, there's a keyword here called func. And, and what do I do with it? And the developer goes, stop. Let me rewrite that line. OK, go again. Um, so it's, it's OK as long as you're doing very, very small things like that. It's very different, much more safe than the old source filters that actually had to scan the entire code. So you could wind up accidentally going into a string or a regular expression or something. They're, they're very safe. And no they happen to compile time. No further questions? Excellent. Everybody, please thank Schwern. Thank you. Uh, we'll we just uh, wait a minute or two for our next presenter to get his slides up.